What is up, everyone? That's right, it is your man on fire mentor, David Mailer, coming to you today and inviting all of my fellow brothers to dive, yes, dive, into the center of the fire and discuss, I'm positive it's her fault. For those of you that are new, welcome. I am the Man on Fire mentor and committed for the past nine years to helping men rise with more passion, with more power, and with more purpose, and live into their full potential. And one of the ways that we help men, one of the ways, right, is relationships. Because a man could be crushing it in his career, he could absolutely have the achievements and the accomplishments. But if he doesn't have his queen by his side or said differently, if he's not happy and fulfilled in his relationship, it usually leads to a pain. It usually leads to a deep hurt. And it's important that we as men are able to have success in this area of our life equally as we are able to have with our career, our finances, our mission, our purpose, and our health. But relationships is one of the trickiest things to navigate. And a relationship is a mirror for exactly where we're at in our growth. It's very hard to see that for many of us, but the mirror is one thing that will never lie to you. And a relationship is another thing that will reflect back to you a deeper truth of exactly where you're at. The problem is, and the trap is for so many of us, that we have a tendency of pointing our finger at our partner and thinking that she's to blame or she's thinking that we're to blame. And it's very challenging to recognize that when we're pointing one finger out, there's also three fingers pointing back at ourselves, which in English basically means that we have to look more deeply and more intimately at ourselves before we're so quick to blame our partner. So let's talk about this, about I'm positive that it's her fault. I want to clear up some misconceptions for any men that have been following me for a long time. Because I am a men's mentor, although on the side, my wife and I also do couples coaching, and my wife coaches a lot of the men in our community. We coach a lot of the couples. But primarily for those that follow me on my podcasts and on the different social platforms, I'm out there and I'm talking to the men and I'm supporting the men in growing, supporting the men in rising with more passion, power, and purpose, and learning how to be the protector and the guardian and the gatekeeper to the feminine heart. So the message sometimes could get misconstrued and many men may feel at times that I'm putting blame or fault on the man or why does it always have to rest on the man's shoulders? Why is it always up to the man to make the changes? What about her? What does she get a free pass? Doesn't she have to change? Why do I have to take all of this uh, you know, responsibility? So let me create some clarity around this. Number one, uh, a relationship is a two-way street. And it will ultimately take contribution from both people in the relationship. You can't have one partner that's fully committed to a life of growth and another partner that's not just stuck or stagnant, but a partner that is refusing to grow. Ultimately, that very well may lead to a separation, if not a divorce or an ending of the relationship. The challenge that I always put in front of a man is that if you know in your heart and you know in your soul that the person that you're with is not the person you're supposed to be with, then have the dignity, have the respect to end the relationship from a place of love, from a place of grace, from a place of empathy, from a place of compassion, rather than sitting there naming, blaming, shaming, judging, projecting, pointing your finger out and being in a polarized or triggered place. If you know in your heart that the relationship doesn't serve you at the highest level, then why not just end it? If you're betraying yourself by staying in it, then why not just end it? And of course, you have your plethora of reasons, some of which are visible, some of which are invisible. The visible ones could be anything from, well, now is not the right time to, I'm going to wait until the kids go off to college or my children are too young. Uh, well, I've already had two failed marriages. You, you're going to have lots of reasons and stories and justifications as to why you can't exit. Some of the invisibles could be you're, you're terrified to be alone or you're terrified what people will think of you if you were to end the relationship because you're connected to a lot of the family on her side and you don't want to be seen as the villain, you don't want to be seen as the bad person, and so you might just stay in it. Or you just have trouble confronting 
you have trouble, I don't mean being confrontational, but you have trouble confronting, like really handling and dealing with what's in front of you, facing it and actually doing something about it. So what we do know from the teachings that I've shared with you guys over the years is that you can never win the game of self-betrayal. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, if you married somebody that in your heart and soul, you know that you were betraying yourself, there's no way that that could play out where there's happiness at the other side of it, right? You, you ultimately will manifest a relationship that's not healthy that has to come to an end. Maybe your partner ends up cheating and then you become the victim or you're pissed off at them when in reality you betrayed yourself by overriding your truth. And it goes the other way for the woman as well. Sometimes she'll override her truth knowing not to get with her partner. And those relationships never end well because if somebody was dishonest with themselves, then they ultimately betrayed themselves. And if you betrayed yourself, the relationship will end in a form of betrayal. So what has to happen uh, for a man is it's important that you look at your relationship as not being something where it's filtered through the lens of blame and fault. Meaning I'm asking you to graduate that type of consciousness that resides at a very low frequency where somebody has to be right and somebody has to be wrong. And a classic example could be an affair because the average mind will think, well, yeah, the person that cheated is the person that's wrong and the person that got cheated on is the person that's right. So therefore, it is the person's fault that cheated and they are to blame. And I'm asking you just for a moment to just come on this ride with me into new perspectives and take everything out of the context of being blame and fault. And let's look at it through a higher lens, through a higher perspective of everything that is showing up in my life is in relationship to who I am. And it's in relationship to who I'm being. And this movie that I keep watching called My Life and, and my relationship is a part of my life and my movie, how it's playing out has to do with what I, what I have put out into the field, meaning I am the projector projecting onto this screen called life. And what I keep watching is because what I keep putting out. And if I want to have a different life and I want to have a different relationship, I don't mean with a different person, but I mean a different relationship, how you relate to this person, you want your relationship to change. Well, then it stands to reason that if you want to have different uh, relationship, you will want to have a different relationship with your finances. If you want to have a different relationship with your career, with your health, with your very mission and your purpose, well, you're the one that has to change. But, you know, it's easy to see that when it comes to health, you can't blame your partner, right? It's easy to see that with your finances. You can't blame your partner. There's nobody more more responsible than you. You don't have to look further than the mirror. So you understand that with your health. You understand that with your finances. And you understand that with your mission and your purpose. But then when it comes to your relationship, somehow we can't see the connection. We can't see the connection of, oh, it's still up to me. And if I want to have it be different, then I'm the one that has to actually change. Because when you're in a relationship, that gives you permission to blame somebody else and to fault somebody else and to think that the reason you're unhappy and the reason things aren't good is because of your partner, not because of you. Hence, now you can put blame and fault on somebody else where you're in a lower tier of consciousness called polarity as opposed to realizing you're stuck. It's your pattern. You keep repeating it and you have to ultimately take responsibility for your pattern. So relationships are a very tricky dynamic because we're very quick to blame and to fault. And I'll come back to the affair in a moment and we'll, we'll have a little bit further clarification on that. So with what I'm sharing thus far, well, what would be a higher way of seeing this? What would be a higher way of handling this? What would be an up-leveled way? What would be a way that's more congruent and aligned with who you really are as a man would be, well, I want to take ownership. I want to take responsibility for the life that's in front of me. I created it. And if I want to have a different life, then I have to paint and create a different life. And rather than uh, pointing a finger through blame and fault, what if you just traded that in for, I want to take conscious ownership and conscious responsibility for everything that is showing up and appearing in my life. I am the creator of it and it is on me. And if I want to see it different, then it's on me. So now, does this mean that the woman that you're with doesn't have to assume responsibility or ownership for things that she's done or contributed to where the relationship's at? No, of course not. 
And something that I think a lot of men miss, and I'm going to do my best to bring this to your awareness, is that while I completely am aligned with it takes two to tango, while I'm completely aligned with both parties in a relationship have to take ownership and responsibility for what belongs to them and what and where the relationship is at can't just be because of one person. It's got to be because of both people. While I'm aligned with that, what I think would be really important for a man to understand is that the man must go first. What does that mean? It means you must be the leader. You're the captain of the ship, right? You're the master of time and space, meaning you, you know where you're headed in space and you know the timing of when you want to bring your ship to where you want to bring it. So you don't get in a car uh, taking your wife on a, on a date and say, oh, uh, can I get those directions again? Or, or what time are we supposed to be there again? No, you want to be the captain of your ship. You want to be the master of time and the master of space. And she wants to be able to lean into you and be able to soften and surrender into her flow energy, into her more feminine, graceful energy, where she doesn't have to hold things through the lens of a structure. And she could be more in her feminine essence and you could be more in your masculine leadership, uh, more in your energy of being rooted and, and steady and sturdy where you could be fully trusted. So what has to happen is the man must go first. And if you're waiting for her to go first, it's like you're basically putting on a feminine mask and you're asking her to be the leader. You're asking her to be the man. You're asking her to keep on a masculine mask. And there's a lot there for you to look at from, you know, the little boy in you has a lot of healing to do. And maybe you've, you know, turned her into your mom or maybe you've become the pleaser or the yes man. But in the man on fire world, regardless if both parties in a relationship need to take ownership and responsibility, we always challenge the man to be the person that goes first. Now, why is another reason? Why is that? Well, something that I want to invite you to be open and present to is this. Before you ever met your wife or your fiance or the person that you're dating, before you ever met them, chances are they've experienced betrayal by the masculine, whether it was a father, whether it was uh, a brother, whether it was an uncle, whether it was a past boyfriend, whether it was a past husband, whether it was something that happened to their mother, whether it was something something that happened to their grandmother. The, the feminine carries the wounding of betrayal from the masculine. Well, what does that mean? It means that when a man is not operating in his full capacity, when he's not standing in the fullness of his potential, he's selling himself and he's selling his, his partner, his wife, short, and he's selling humanity short of the man that he's capable of being. Everyone loses when you're not able to stand in the conviction and the knowing of who you really are and go from the acorn into the oak tree and really give humanity the real version of you. So when you're not doing this, then you're most likely operating from a lower frequency, a lesser version of yourself. And chances are where you once signed on to be the protector of your wife's heart, you also became somebody that most likely contributed to hurting it. Whether that was through um, yelling, whether that was through emotional abuse, whether it's through mental abuse, uh, there are obviously different forms of betrayals in no way, shape, or form do we ever uh, support any form of physical violence uh, in general, but especially towards a female. But there's been lots of betrayals that she's uh, had over the duration of her life. And what does that mean? It means that there's a lack of safety. And your job as the husband is to create a safety, to create a rite of passage for your wife to be able to come back into her heart and for her physiology to be able to soften and surrender where she feels safe enough to reveal her true beauty to you, which is broadcasted through her heart, which will trump uh, the beauty that exists on the outside, the external beauty in a woman, just like in a man will always fade. But if her heart is online and her heart is on fire, that's a beauty that can't be extinguished. But it's challenging for a woman to keep the full reveal and the fire burning in her heart because there's a lack of safety because many men today are not really living into um, the fullness of who they can be. And so their immature masculine shows up or their wounded masculine shows up like the little boy energy shows up. Maybe you come home and you're on the computer 
you know, you're on, you're, you know, scrolling through sports or social media on your phone and you're sitting there drinking a beer or playing video games. You can't be present with the kids. You can't be present with her. And your go-to excuse is, well, I had a long day at work. You know, I, I put a roof over our head. I'm able to pay the bills, uh, put food on our plate. Well, what do you want from me? What, you know, you're going to kill me. I, I can't, I can't come home and be present. I gave, I left it all uh, at work. I mean, if that's your way of thinking, number one, job well done for providing and protecting. But in today's world, let's be real, guys. There's more that you can offer. There's, there's being present and bringing the fullness of your presence into your family dynamic. And it's up to you to navigate your schedule and make sure that you have more left in the tank to bring energy into your relationship. So there is lots of micro and macro betrayals. If you're really honest with yourself and you really look deeply enough at your marriage, you would really see that you have absolutely contributed um, to the hurt that she's feeling. And so there you are, you know, as a man, you want to say, well, why is it always the man's fault? Why is, why is he always to blame? Why do you always put it on the man? And I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that at all. I'm calling you guys to rise and to graduate this lower way of thinking. And I'm inviting you and challenging you at the same time to come out of that logic and come back into your heart and to the remembrance of who you are. And just like if any of you have a little daughter you would do anything to protect her. Just think about her innocence at age three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, you would kill to protect her and because the world could be so cruel and you want to keep her away from predators or anyone that could physically, sexually, emotionally, or mentally hurt her. You would do anything for that little girl, yet you forget that your wife at one point was that little girl. And now all of a sudden, you're the one that's contributing to the hurt rather than being the guardian of her heart. So am I saying that it's your fault and that it's all on you and that you're to blame? Absolutely not. And again, this is not about blame. This is not about fault. This is about your willingness as a man to live into and have the courage to live into the fullness of who you were born to be, to live into your potential. Are you courageous enough to do that? And if you do that, isn't it possible that if you start showing that version of you, to your, and I don't mean an impossible standard, okay? I'm not talking about being a seal in a circus where you have to balance stuff on your nose and you have to juggle and you have to do this for her approval. I'm talking about you're doing this for you. You're doing this because of your hunger to want to grow and be the real you for the world because then everyone in your life benefits from your children to your wife, to your friends, to family, to strangers, to humanity. Everyone benefits by you showing up in your full capacity. So if you were to be more of that man, then the question is, how would she show up? What would be different in your relationship if you had the courage to bring that version of you forward into your marriage? Well, then how she's relating to you changes, how you relate to her changes, and then therefore the relationship is completely different. The relationship, how you relate to one another changes as you continue to grow as a man. Now. What if you keep growing and you keep opening up, which happens with a lot of the guys that join one of our coaching programs, and what if you see that she's still stuck and she's still stagnant and she's still blaming you and she's still pointing her finger and she's still resistant to growth and um, she has all of these tendencies and all of these mannerisms and all of these ways where you're just not aligned with it anymore? Well, you would have to know where your cutoff point is. You would have to know that you gave, you gave it your all to bring her back into alignment with who she really is. You'd have to know that, and we we uh, encourage the man in our community in one of our coaching programs, take a year of growing yourself as a man where you could uh, look in the mirror with all honesty and sincerity and really love the guy that's looking back at you. Like you're super proud of how you're showing up. You're proud of the integrity that you've taken on, the responsibilities, the commitments, uh, and how you're living with you know higher virtues and standards and values and, and give her that version of you for a year. And if you're then with somebody that is simply not willing to grow with you and doesn't want to grow, well, then you'll at that point in time be able to end the relationship from a high level of grace with lots of love, with lots of empathy, with lots of compassion in your heart. That's not what happens with a lot of guys. With a lot of guys, there's still a lot of finger pointing and there's still a lot of story about she's this and she's that. And you still have this charge, you still have this venom, which tells me you haven't done enough work on yourself. 
And you don't want to hear that, right? A lot of guys don't want to hear that. They want to keep going back to, well, what is, what is she, why can't she take some of the blame? And I'm going to keep bringing you back out of that way of thinking. It's not about blame. It's about conscious ownership and responsibility. So let me give you an example that I've shared many times uh, on my podcasts. And it's, it's a good one for you guys to relate to. And here's, and I think this will hit home for many of you. So I am um, happily married since uh, 2015. I have an amazing, amazing wife that truly um, has inspired me to want to uh, be a better man and show up more powerfully for myself and for the world each and every day. And I'm absolutely blessed to have my queen, Kathleen, be my life partner. We uh, entered into a very conscious relationship where uh, I don't put on her that she's supposed to fill me, right? The Jerry Maguire, you complete me. No, I, I have to fill myself and I have to find my own internal peace and happiness and she has to do the same for herself. And we recognize that our relationship will serve as a mirror for uh, the shadow, for the parts of us that we buried, right? For the familial patterns that we inherited that we're here to work on in this lifetime. And through immense amount of respect and reverence for one another, we um, consciously have come together recognizing that anytime we're upset with each other, it's not really about the other person. It's more about um, it's triggering something inside of ourselves that needs to be healed. And so we have a high level of mutual respect and understanding and, co and compassion and empathy. And we use our relationship as a practice uh, to practice the art of love and to practice the art of growing closer to spirit, to God. And we have both come into this consciously with that understanding. But prior to being married to my wife, I had a previous marriage uh, that ended like 15 years ago. And the relationship was not able to get through what I call the treacherous waters of an affair. It was my partner, uh, my wife at the time, had an affair. And there's not one part of me that holds her uh, uh, responsible or uh, blames her or faults her. Now, back then, Right, we're we're going back, you know, 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago. Back then, I didn't have the emotional maturity. I didn't have the emotional depth. Um, I didn't have the masculine leadership. I was more the wounded little boy. How could you do this to me? And I was able to, you know, call her every name in the book. And I was just, I didn't know what to do with that level of hurt. And so it was very easy for me to look at it through the lens of, well, it's her fault. I mean, I, I didn't do this, you did this. And a lot of people would have agreed. However, I'm not looking for people to agree with me. I'm looking for people to challenge the way I see things, to challenge uh, my perspectives and help me see what's uh, my blind spot, what, what's invisible to me that's preventing me from growing. And what I came to learn was that if, if I, as a man, want to take full ownership and full responsibility for my life, which means that everything that's showing up in it, from my finances, to my health, to my mission and my purpose, to my career, to my marriage, if I want to take full ownership and responsibility that all of those domains in my life are there and are the way they are because of me and me alone, well, then I realize that I have to look at, well, how did I create this? Just like you could say, well, how did I create abundance or how am I creating lack? How, how does that happen? Or how am I vital and alive and, and healthy as opposed to how am I sick and ill? If I could take full responsibility for my life, then I realize I'm the one that's creating all of this. So I had to look at my previous marriage where um, she's the one that had the affair. How did I create this if I create my life? And what I came to realize is that I never really created a safe enough space for my wife at the time to feel that I was all in on the marriage. I never helped her feel energetically that I'm not going anywhere. I never was able to fully contain my energy, meaning I leaked my energy out, those flirtations with other people, looking at pictures, fantasizing about other people, and I had to take a deep, dark look at the shadow, the parts of me that you know you would normally be ashamed of having. Um, you don't want anyone to see you through this light. You certainly don't want to be judged. You know, every man wants to be seen as trustworthy, reliable, 
committed, a man of integrity, a man of honor. And absolutely, there are parts of me that resonate and operate from that from that place and that frequency. However, there are other parts of me. And at that stage of my life, the other parts of me were getting a lot of attention. And so I realized that by me not really protecting her heart and helping her feel fully, you know, that I'm all in, that I'm never going to withdraw my love, I'm never going anywhere, um, my energy is going to be contained, you're going to always feel safe with me. I can't say that I did those things. And I'm not saying you have to be perfect, guys, but let's be real. You know the difference of when you're operating from a place of deep maturation and deep masculine leadership as opposed to when you're being self-serving and your ego's in control and you're still trying to get a hit off of other people and other women to try to feel better about yourself. So I realized that although um, she had a affair, she didn't, um, it's not her fault and she's not to blame. I created it. Now, does she have to, at some point in her life, look at patterns in herself as to why did she choose to act out in that way? Um, why did she choose that behavior? And, and can she learn from that experience, grow from that experience, take ownership and responsibility? Of course. And that's for her to do. That's for her to do on her end. All I can do on my end is take a look at how did I create this knowing that I create my reality, I create my life. And if I can take my ownership and my responsibility, that's all I can ever do. And I was able to do that. And in doing so, I was able to forgive myself. I was able to completely forgive her. And today we have um, a wonderful relationship that's, that's built around mutual respect. And it's amazing to be able to have that, where you're not holding on to animosity, you're not holding on to blame or fault. And um, there's not one part of me that looks at it through the lens of she did this to me. No, I look at it as I created this based on who I was being at that stage in my life, that my energy um, created the container for this to take place. Now, in hindsight, had that never taken place, I never would have had the deeper desire to want to grow as a man, have my blind spots illuminated and bring up more of the shadow work for me to really work on. And Man on Fire never could have formed. That was one of the key components that led to my personal growth and the growth and development of Man of Fire as a company, because you have to have the courage to take your deepest hurts and your deepest wounds and flip them over and convert them into gifts. So, uh, you know, this might be a new way of thinking for some of you that are listening to me for the first time. And I'm, I'm certainly not here to um, make anyone wrong for how they see things. I come more from the lens of, you know, everyone's right. No matter what perspective you have, the reality is you're right, right? Everyone's right. And, but the thing, the thing to recognize is that, do you want to be right or do you want to be free? And one of the fundamental core teachings in Man on Fire is that the man that can hold the most perspectives without making one of those perspectives solid is the man that has the power. We then challenge that man to visit perspectives that sit outside of his comfort zone and challenge him into a higher vibrational truth. What does that mean in English? It means that are you willing to see things through a lens that makes you uncomfortable because comfort and growth are not friends? And if you're willing to see it in a way that calls you into a higher truth, so Right, The lower truth for me would have been, it's her fault. She's the one that did this. How could you say it's my fault? I didn't do this. I didn't ask for this. That is correct and that is right, but only within a certain vibrational range. In my own growth and evolution as a man, at a higher resonance, at a higher frequency, at a higher truth, what I could see is that I created it. And I can assure you that both perspectives are right. However, one leads to freedom and one will continue to lead to pain and most likely will block your opportunity for growth. So I'm inviting uh, the men that are listening right now, number one, to recognize that, you know, if you're constantly pointing your finger at your partner, you know, the first thing you really want to look at is, you know, when you first got with this person, whether you're boyfriend and girlfriend, whether you're uh, boyfriend, boyfriend, whether you're, um, engaged, whether you're uh, married, did you 
have it, an impulse? Did you have a knowing that perhaps this person is not for you? And did you override that? Because if you did, that will always come back to bite you. So that's the first thing to look at. You, you know, how is it supposed to play out in a relationship if if you had a soul knowing, a deep, visceral, you know, guttural um, knowing in your heart that you're not really supposed to be with this person, of course it's going to play out where she becomes angry or disgruntled or cold or harsh or maybe it leads to an affair because you set the relationship up where it couldn't win. It couldn't succeed because you were never all in because you felt like you were making a mistake and you didn't have the courage to end it. So how do you expect that relationship to play out? And and the other thing that I, I want you guys to um, have an awareness of to wrap this up is that, well, then if you are in a relationship where you are clear that your partner is stuck and stagnant and you're crystal clear that you've done the work, you've grown tremendously, you're proud of the man that you're seeing in the mirror, you don't have disdain for her, you don't have contempt. You have love, you have empathy, you have compassion, but you recognize on a soul level that you deserve more than this and you know it's time to cut the cord. Well, then do so. Stop punishing yourself and stop punishing her. And for those of you that are like, well, I just need her to take some of the blame. I just need her to take some of the fault. Well, then you haven't been listening to this podcast because it's not about blame and it's not about fault. Well, okay, then I just want her to take her share of ownership. Okay, well... She's not going to be able to do that unless she's done an immense amount of work on herself where in spite of how you've showed up, she's able to stay in her heart and continue to shine her light and she has the emotional depth and maturity to be able to stay in that type of energy. We call this the queen energy where she's really owning her power and owns who she is, owns her sovereignty. And yes, a, a woman that is more awake can stay in her heart regardless of how a man's showing up. But if she is more in her wound, if she's more, uh, you know, she's lost her luster and her light, uh, gotten further out of alignment with who she is, it will be very challenging for her to take ownership and responsibility for what belongs to her in the relationship until you as the man, number one, have gone first and number two, in doing so, have created the safety for her to be able to be vulnerable enough to look at what is her share. Because, and here's the big because, each of you have developed adaptive uh, you know, strategies to compensate from an early age, from the different hurts, the different wounds, different traumas. We've all uh, developed compensatory adaptive behaviors and strategies of how we show up in a relationship to protect us, to protect us from feeling like we're not good enough, to protect us from feeling unlovable. Sometimes that might come out in shutting down or an apathy or an overspending or an alcohol or uh, you know, numbing out, or being cold, or being harsh. These are just adaptive strategies that you developed for your own survival. And there has to be a high level of empathy for recognizing that this is what happens with all of us. We've all taken on traits, the characteristics that are not the real us, but we had to do it in order to feel safe. So you wanna take a step back, you wanna see this game that's unfolding in front of you, and you wanna be able to come back into alignment with remembering her as that little girl just like as if she was your daughter, how you would do anything to protect her. Well, why not do that now? Why not protect her heart and, and just realize it's just a little girl in there that's scared. And what, what she needs is the maturity, the masculine leader to come forward in order to give her uh, the safety in starting to do the work where she can once again drop back down into her heart and out of her head. And it's it, this is a call to all men now to you know stop looking at the relationship through the lens of fault and the lens of blame Look at it from a higher lens, a higher perspective that stretches you into a higher truth where you realize you're the manifester of your life. You're the creator of your life. And if you don't like what's in your life, it's not about cutting out what's in your life. It's about you becoming an up-leveled version of yourself. And for those of you that want some support with that, you want to be challenged, you want to be held accountable, I invite you to always explore one of our coaching programs. Yes, it involves a time commitment. Yes, it involves a financial commitment and energetic commitments. And if you're ready for something like that, let us know. If you're not ready for something like that, that's perfectly okay. Continue to follow me in my podcast and on my other social platforms where there's just you know thousands upon thousands of hours just like today of free content, free content that can absolutely support you guys. All right, gentlemen, here is to you, rising with passion, with power, and with purpose. Thank you for diving into the center of the fire with me today. 
and looking at this topic of I'm positive that it's her fault and now you realize it's never about fault. It's about conscious ownership and responsibility that you want to take for the life that you're living because you, sir, are the creator of your life. Here's to you being a man on fire and rising with passion, with power and purpose. It is your man on fire and mentor signing off.